welcome everybody to the Construction Leaders Forum. The co-chairs thought that we would take a few minutes at the outset of the program and share some of what we're seeing out there in the marketplace today from our varying perspectives. I come at this as coverage counsel for builders, developers, and other policyholders, particularly in California and the western states. And a lot of my practice focuses on construction defect and construction litigation coverage problems. The economy is driving a lot of the claims that we're seeing. It's no secret to anybody in this room that construction defect claims are increasing, and I think a large reason for that is the downturn in the economy. Homeowners, homeowners associations, owners of projects are panicked about their values, and that makes them much more receptive, in my experience, to the uh, importuning of the plaintiff's bar that they pursue a construction or construction defect claim. So construction defect claims as a class are increasing, I think due in large part to the economy. We're also seeing a, lot, a large number of what I'll call mixed or alternative claims. Inadequate or improper licensing of contractors and what that means to the contractor in litigation. Homeowner fraud and rescission claims, which could put the developer or the builder in the very unfortunate position of having to buy back some or all of the units in a community. And one of the sleeper issues that I'm seeing more and more is veil piercing or alter ego claims where the project specific entity is perhaps disregarded and the plaintiff seeks to include as defendants upstream or sidestream entities. In all of this, the insurance coverage issues are becoming more prominent and more prominent earlier. And that's in large part due to the proliferation of self-insured retentions as opposed to deductibles among both contractors, builders, developers, and subs. Among the many issues that we're wrestling with that this conference will deal with in some detail is who can satisfy the self-insured retention? How many self-insured retentions are due, i.e., how many occurrences are there? Has there been satisfaction or erosion of the self-insured retentions? And then the gaps created in the coverage chart by missing or inadequately insured or parties that are insured by uh, insolvent insurers. So all of these issues are now front and center. Whether construction defects are an occurrence under the CGL policy is an issue with a lot of currency at the moment. And at the same time, we're seeing the continuing battle between policyholders and insurers on coverage for damage to the work. What is the extent of that coverage? What's the scope? And in fact, is there coverage at all under the CGL policy? And finally, certainly in my own practice, I'm seeing a much more robust approach by the insurers in trying to claw back defense costs and indemnity money under various legal theories. And that is a change from even as recently as three to five years ago. Last couple of concluding comments. Number one, all of this makes it much more important for policyholders to focus on the negotiating, the drafting, and the manuscripting of their policies when they're out there in the marketplace procuring their coverage. One of my axioms is that you can adjust a lot of claims during the underwriting and policy drafting process if you anticipate the issue and draft for it. And last, I want to stress the importance of a comprehensive and integrated approach to managing and insuring risks. One of the big hidden costs that I'm seeing among developers and builders is <laughs> the management time it takes on the part of the insured party to get through these claims, manage them, and get out the back end successfully.